so this is a screen guide from March 1943 and I bought this in Austin Texas and it was eight dollars which I thought was pretty reasonable for what you're getting I don't have any copies of screen screen guild screen I'm sorry screen guide but uh, what really drew me to this particular issue was um, right there by war bonds I, I just like that little touch right there this magazine is from World War II, 1943, and this is two years after the Americans joined the war, and it is, I guess you could say, the height of World War II. So this was 15 cents. It's got a picture of Inger Bergman on the cover, who was, uh, I mean, superstar at this time. Um, and there's another great surprise in this, in this magazine that I'll show you in a second. On the back, um, we have a, an app for Jolene's Shoes with Beautiful Barbara Stanwyck on the back. And when I think of Barbara Stanwyck, uh, if you ever get a chance to uh, watch the TCM pre-code movies, there's, there's uh, if you Google it, just Google TCM or Turner Classic Movies and pre-code, you'll see um, that Barbara Stanwyck was one heck of a uh, actress in the days before 1935. She made some really edgy, sophisticated movies. So... Um, by the 40s, she settled down and became more mainstream, but she was a uh, very, um, for anyone who likes to study Hollywood, seriously, check out the movies of Barbara Stanwyck, so, um, and uh, <laughs> warm, sympathetic nature revealed by, that is, is that her signature? I guess it is. See, when you watch these old pre-code movies, you're not going to think of a warm, sympathetic nature with Barbara Stanwyck. You're going to think of someone who's pretty tough. So, uh, but these were the uh, shoes of 1943 for ladies. Okay. And I've got my cup of coffee. i got my two cats lurking around here somewhere. So, um, let's get started. Now, the inside cover of Screen Guide uh, has the table of contents, another War Bonds uh, stamp here, uh, and it is straight up talking about movies, and uh, there's a picture of Eddie Rochester Anderson. Um, I'm a big Jack Benny fan, so I'm obviously familiar with who Rochester was. Um, there's... Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn, famous Hollywood couple. Um, it says this month, the biggest year in Screen Guide's history has already begun. And issues like this one explain why Screen Guide is the only magazine to give its readers true behind the headline stories every month. This issue tells you why Bob Hope can't be himself. You also get the real lowdown on Gable and learn all the facts about Judy Garland's rise to fame. You can catch up on Hollywood's latest romances and feuds, too. You'll find all the latest data in the Hollywood Life section, eight full pages. And for a special treat, there are full-color pictures of Bob Hope, Lorraine Day, Ida Lupino, and Alice Faye, all in addition to the lovely cover portrait of Ingrid Bergman by our own Jack Alvin. Other pictures in this issue were taken by the photographers listed below. Where more than one photographer's work is represented in a feature, the number of pictures contributed by each is indicated. So, um, what I'm thinking is this was a, this was, um, a movie lover's magazine, but also a popular culture, uh, and it's all about the pictures, you know, keep in mind this is before the internet, this is before, um, you could just see pictures of your stars, your favorite stars, uh, on a whim like we can now, we can just go on there and, and just zap anything we want to see at any given time, but back then, they would have to go to the newsstand and buy this magazine. So, I'm gonna put this cover under here. Okay, first off, uh, speaking of Rochester, here's a, a nice color ad for Cabin in the Sky, um, which was an African-American uh, movie uh, and all of the lead stars being African American, and um, we have Rochester, Ethel Waters, and Lena Horne. Uh, Lena Horne is just like, I mean, she was beautiful all the way through. I remember 
the last time I saw Lena Horn in my lifetime was on episode of Sanford and Son of All Things, and she was still a beautiful lady, even though um, she was much older at that point. Um, it's MGM's happy hit from the sensational Broadway musical. It's got music by Duke Ellington. So, here is an ad for Gene Autry. Um, and here's just the the pictures, the the, the paparazzi pictures. Um, and a lot of these actors and actresses are kind of forgotten now. Like, if you if you pick up a copy of... of uh, a paparazzi magazine nowadays like people or something and if you grab a copy from 2011 or 2015 a lot of the people who they thought were going to be a big deal are, are you probably forgotten about so linda darnell um ali par um george montgomery dinah shore um uh notice the patriotism the the uniforms showing up and unlike any time in my lifetime uh during world war ii all of the actors uh it was a big deal for them to be in the military even just to put on a uniform this was a war where being in a uniform was a big deal um and you see a lot of them will be wearing uniforms clark gable uh glenn miller jimmy stewart you there were so many who did join the military here is a an amazing treat here. It's a an ad, a color ad for Casablanca. Current, uh, what, I'm sorry, this ad being produced, printed, while Casablanca was in theater. So this is particularly exciting for me to look at. It's playing now, or will be soon. Why not call your theater? Um, there's a lot, and as time goes on, we we tend to. Um, romanticize or or uh revise history to suit our own uh needs but the the two things that strike me when you watch or listen to uh information about old movies they like to say that Casablanca and It's a Wonderful Life were not popular or widely known when they came out um and that's just bunk uh they were popular they were widely known and Casablanca won Oscars It's a Wonderful Life was popular enough to draw to make um a lux radio program at least one or if not two or three using the actual voices so to say that it's a wonderful life only became popular after it showed on tv or casablanca only became popular after it showed on tv is just kind of silly they were hugely popular movies and there is a lot of incorrect information on the internet these days so just be beware um Here's some more pictures of Hollywood life. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to see. There's Barbara Stanwyck. Uh, some like it hot. Vera Hubra. Uh, when pronouncing, drop the H, so it's Vera Ruba. There's a, see, there's just a lot of actors who were might have been popular for a hot second and then forgotten. Here's a um, deodorant called Mum. Takes the odor out of perspiration. Mm, see, it applied to the armpit, I guess. Just to be polite, you'd think they'd ask me to lunch, but uh, Edna here, they don't want to go to lunch with her because she has smelly armpits. So she gets herself some mum, and then they all are like, you can come to lunch with us, Edna. Okay. Nestle Color Rinse. Wow. So this is Nestle, presumably the same Nestle that makes chocolate. But they're making uh, hair dye. Yeah, it's uh, hair ac hair accents. Don't dim out the highlights in your hair. So Nestle was at this time making hair stuff to color your hair. It's interesting. Um, here's an ad for Pepsodent. And um, pep Pepsodent powder or paste. So there were still a lot of people using tooth powder at this time. There. Uh, simply, you would... Um, I've even used tooth powder. I mean, you can still find it. it. You can find anything nowadays. But the thing is, is you wet your tooth... You just rinse your toothbrush, and then you just tap your toothbrush on top of the powder and brush your teeth. It, it, it's not any different than toothpaste. 
Um, when I was a kid, it wasn't it wasn't unusual, and we were raised that uh, every month or so you would um, brush your teeth with Arm and Hammer. So, um, so you'd reg you I would use regular toothpaste, and then one day a month I would uh, use Arm and Hammer just to get rid of like any kind of like Coca Cola stains or anything like that, any anything that might unwhiten my teeth. So, um, essentially, tooth powder. This was Arm and Hammer. Once again. Uh, the uniform being worn by an actor, in this case Burgess Meredith, you might remember him from Rocky, as Rocky's manager, and as you can see, he's a lieutenant in the Army, uh, and uh, Army Air Corps, you can tell by that patch there, uh, there's, no, that's, I thought that was Henry Fonda, but that's Phil Reed, Henry Fonda also, he was in the Navy during World War II. Might all. Girls who live by the clock can't suffer by the calendar. If, think about that for a second and you'll understand what they're talking about. And that's might all. Relieves functional periodic pain. That is a very, very uh, gentle euphemism for what it's talking about. Um, here is Herbert Marshall, uh, Flight for Freedom, another pay, uh, color poster with Rosalind Russell and Fred McMurray. You might remember Rosalind Russell from her most famous role in Anti Anti Mame, I think, and Fred McMurray from My Three Sons or The Cane Mutiny. They were still trying to figure out what to do with them at this point. Um, the lowdown of the Errol Flynn and Sheridan romance. Uh, this is a little bit before Errol Flynn was gonna start getting in trouble all the time. He was still just a, and like here's a picture of him with a little sick kid and everything. So, they the the publicists were really trying to make Errol Flynn as a very um, um, family friendly entertainer with uh, movie hits like Robin Hood and Captain Blood and, and all of that. Uh, now Errol Flynn's behavior got him in a lot of trouble later on down the road because he was a bit of a lotherio and and an alcoholic. It's kind of sad if you. Um, in the 50s, around 1959, he did a show. Was, I think it was called like Errol, Errol Flynn Presents or something. It was a show based in England you know, on BBC. And on the episodes, he would be so noticeably drunk that he would bump into things on the in, during the live tapings. And sometimes he would just sort of laugh at himself into, in in this sort of pathetic shame. It was it's a sad sight to see such a, you know, action star collapse. But... Um, Here's Henry Fonda uh, and Maureen O'Hara, Irish, Maureen O'Hara and a mortal sergeant. Uh, I told you a little bit about Henry Fonda, but next time you watch Miracle on 34th Street, if you didn't watch it last Christmas, pay attention to Maureen O'Hara struggling with that Irish accent. I, I, some, a few times in that movie, she just slips up and her Irish accent is all you hear because she naturally spoke with an Irish accent and she had to put on an American accent. A lot of people don't know that. Um, Lieutenant Clark Gable of the U.S. Army Air Forces, he did it the hard way. And he enlisted as a private, and he, um, he actually saw combat. Clark Gable, um, actually did, uh, I don't know how true it is, but I heard that, see, his wife had died on a, um, on a war bond tour during the war, and... And I don't know how true this is, but some people said that he volunteered for particularly hazardous uh, flying duties because he was sort of suicidal at the loss of his wife. And I don't know how true that is. Um, Betty Grable, the f most famous pinup of World War II was by all means Betty Grable. And here's a bunch of imitators imitating her look. Um, now, unfortunately, the original owner of this magazine cut parts out of it, but hey, it was their magazine. But there will be a few cuts like this. Uh, Rita Hayworth. She was also a pretty popular pinup. That's so old Bob Hope. Old Ski knows himself. Um, Bob Hope. This is Hope. Super comedian, but Bob would never know it. Um... This is funny because it looks like they cut and pasted a pic. 
Um, that's Bill Bendix and Bob Hope, but it looks like they cut and pasted the faces onto these bodies, and this is the days before Photoshop. So, but this is a great full color. Now, what what would happen is you bought this magazine. If you were a Bob Hope fan, you would actually pull this out and uh, frame it or stick it on your wall. So. I was um, recently in Amsterdam at the Anne Frank Museum, and she had, throughout the war, she had post pulled pictures of her favorite actors and stuck them on the wall, and they're still there to be seen. It was very interesting. Um, the real story of Ingrid Bergman. Once again, these are all pub publicist articles. These were not their real lives. I mean, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think that she was sitting there keeping house and knitting, knitting and all that stuff. They like to do that because they wanted them relatable to, um, Amer you know, average American people. So, in, in the early days of Hollywood, well, actually, no, this is not the early days. These are, this is after the Hayes Code, and what they were trying to do is rehabilitate the image of Hollywood, because uh, in the twenties, the image of Hollywood was bad. And the image of Hollywood was murder, drugs, uh, sex scandals from the uh, Fatty Arbuckle case, which is a whole story we'll have to talk about some other time. William Desmond Taylor, um, Mary Miles Minter, um, Mabel Norman. There were so many bad things that they made, pu publicists made these spreads and sold these articles which tried to show Hollywood stars in this really good light. And I have a sneaking feeling that this is going to happen again really soon. Because right now Hollywood, if you may not notice, is on a rehabilitation course as we speak today. Because a lot of the actors and actresses have alienated lots of Americans by a lot of things they've said or done and or behavior they've displayed which is so unrelatable to most Americans that there's going to be a probably another version of this all coming soon <laughs> doesn't she look like Scarlett Johansson this is uh, Ida Lupino and if they ever wanted to make an Ida Lupino movie Scarlett Johansson really looks like her in my opinion I mean maybe you know, I think that would be a good pick um, star discovered by the Nazis Helmut Dantin knows our enemy and also the way to defeat him Interesting. So he's a German actor. And, um... Here's another picture. Lorraine Day. Nice full-color picture. Uh, if you wanted to put on your wall. And look how rich the colors were in this magazine. I have to admit, this is good quality. And this is... This is 70-something years old. So... I mean, in, in three more years, this will be 80 years old. So, uh, think about how well this rich color printing has held up. That is just fantastic. It, it really is. So, I'm going to cut a picture out here from this Judy Garland movie. I think they wanted a picture of Judy Garland. And here's your, your Judy Garland picture. Another thing you could do is you would maybe cut this out and put it in an envelope and send it to the actor and try to get their autograph. So that was another thing. There's the Gum Sisters. See, Judy Garland was really named um, Frances Gum, and she originally started in kind of a, a vaudeville kind of thing of called the Gum Sisters. And then she broke off and became super famous Judy Garland. So, Oh, two-page spread. Star-Spangled Rhythm. Patriotic... Um, movie with Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, Fred McMurray, all of the big, a lot of the big names, Paulette Goddard, um, Dick Powell, Betty Hutton, Eddie Bracken, Veronica Lake, Alan Ladd, Rochester, my goodness, it's a lineup of stars uh, and a movie that a lot of people don't even remember. It'll never be topped. Well, in star power, that's pretty impressive. Uh, this is more about Judy Garland and her life. Uh, Wizard of Oz came out a few years before this, and she was already kind of famous for all the Andy Hardy movies. So, um, she and she stayed famous until the 60s when she passed away. 
uh, Kame Soap, and it is brought to you by um, the lovely bride, Mrs. R. M. Thorson. Why does that say that? Name seem familiar. Glamour girls mourn the perfect bachelor, a wife, and not the army captures Reggie Gardner. And another guy in uniform. I wonder. Um, that doesn't look like an American uniform. Reggie Gardner. Um... He, I think he's a British. Uh, that's a that appears to be uh, a British, maybe British uniform. It's not an American uniform. Maybe British Navy. Um, Alice Fay, um, married. She was a pinup, and she was married to uh, Phil Harris, Jack Benny's band leader. I'm not sure if she was married to him yet. Yeah, maybe the next year. Uh, some, there's Veronica Lake and someone cut half of the picture out she was famous for that peekaboo hairstyle here's an ad for Duragloss look how they uh, it's black and white except for the uh, the red it's, they, they still kind of use that, uh, that trick nowadays on ads but this just looks better I think they just did things better back then Don't Take a Weather Beating by Edith Hampton. There's an ad for Special Dream with Hair Conditioner. No other shampoo leaves hair so lustrous and yet so easy to manage. A War Baby Speaks Up. Tiny Pamela gives her mother, Brenda Joyce, a bit of advice. Lysol. Once again, we're talking. Other wives hear my story. This is a thing about breath. It looks almost looks like the same woman from the other ad. Last time she had bad armpits, and now she has bad breath. But she straightens herself out with some Lysol. Um, White Oki scares the stars. Uh, Jack Oki. Uh, vaguely, I'm I'm actually not too familiar with everything Jack Oki is. I remember I recognize the name. I'm guessing a comedy actor. I think. And here's a great ad for Pepsi Cola. Check out a few things to notice in the ad. Uh, besides the 40s, look, one guy's wearing a uniform. So at least one person is in uniform. The, every Gwen Anderson, Herbert Evers, Betty Breckenridge, Frank, Amy, Margaret Wallace, and Gertrude Beach. I don't recognize any of those names, but Janie, a show that hits the spot, now playing at Henry Miller's Theater in New York. Is that the Henry Miller? The Henry Miller who wrote *Tropic of Cancer*? I don't know. I'm 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 getting lost here. Um, Westmore Foundation Cream. Um, hands chapped. Here's not only soothing relief but faster healing. Noxema for your hands. Is that? What do you think about that, Fiona? That just seems weird. I know of Noxema for your face. Like I said, this magazine is making me more confused than anything else. Here's another deodorant, Arid. You might recognize it still exists, Arid. I use Arid, the largest selling deodorant. It safely stops perspiration and odor. Another cutout. Oh, look. Bugs Bunny. So someone wanted Bugs Bunny in the magazine because they, they put all the other actors. Why not put one of the most famous ones? And you were probably like, when, when did people watch cartoons if they didn't have TVs? Which most people didn't have TVs in 1943. Very few people had TVs in 1943, but they did exist. But cartoons really weren't on them. The cartoons played before movies um, in the movie theater. So... 
Uh, a lot of those old Bugs Bunny cartoons, if you've ever seen them, those actually had originally played before a movie. And if you're careful, you might you might be able to tell what movie it was because a lot of the times the cartoon had elements of the movie uh, mixed in with it. Like if it was a gangster movie, there might be a Bugs Bunny cartoon where he's with a bunch of gangsters or something. What is this? Betty Grable, Miss Nashville Bombardier. The popularity of Betty Grable grows and grows. Last year, 40,000 letters a month made her the serviceman's sweetheart. This month, she is Victory Appeal Candidate, page 13, and Woodrow Browning, page 39. Other candidates call her Miss Nashville Bombardier. And there's a letter from the Air Force um, San Antonio Aviation Cadet Center. It's funny because that's where I went to. My training was in San Antonio. I bet it was probably the same place. Uh, Miss Nashville Bombardier, Miss Betty Grable, 20th Century Fox Studio, Hollywood. In view of the fact that your pictures, especially springtime in the Rockies, and our long stay in the classification center seems very short. The Aviation Cadet Bombardier Squadron of Censored, who came from Nashville, Tennessee, have picked you as our ideal girl. To show our appreciation, you do hereby vow and state that we, the Aviation Cadet Bombardiers from Nashville, Tennessee, and known as the Nashville Bombardiers, do as a token of our appreciation for your fine performance and because you are our ideal girl upon our departure for pre-flight school, hereby order, direct, and otherwise state that the title of Miss Nashville Bombardier is bestowed upon you in compliance with the provisions of the paragraph. And it's written like a military citation. And and I note the uh, the censorship, which is in, in completely intentional because they were pushing this to everybody. And to show censorship in this magazine is going to make people feel more comfortable when their letters were being censored. So everything... Let me, I can't stress enough when I say that Hollywood was completely controlled and directed by the military during World War II. They, everything, it was, a, it was a, I mean, it was a total war and every element of our culture was supporting that total war. Here's movies to see. Andy Hardy steps out. Action North Atlantic, I've seen that one. Bombardier. Corregidor, I've seen that. Crash Dive, Edge of Darkness, Flight for Freedom, Lady of Burlesque, The Hangman, Hitler's Children, Ice Capades Review. I, I've seen almost all of these on TCM at one time or another. Um, in which we serve. Let's look at all of the um, pro, the, the war effort movies. Casablanca, of course, Air Force. I mean, so many of these movies. And we also have the uh, lower, the lower paying ads at this point. We have the smaller ads for the shadier things, piano teaching, hairpins, uh, insurance, gray hair, itch checked in a jiffy, hair removal, uh, letters to the editor, <laughs> Claudette Colbert sets a good example. I agree with you, screen guy. Claudette Colbert is the first lady of Hollywood. She is natural on the screen. And you do not realize she's acting. Best of all, the years take nothing from her. Instead, she seems to become a finer character actress. Claudette always does everything that's required of her with dignity. She would be a first lady under any circumstances. I, I love Claudette Colbert. I really do. But let's just state that this is 1943. And... um um. Things were, uh, this is not the same Claudette Colbert who appeared in Cleopatra or The Sign of the Cross. The Sign of the Cross, particularly, if you get your, your hands on a Cecil B. DeMille collection, this pre-code movie, Claudette Colbert actually featured uh, frontal nudity in it. So, a lot of these actors, they rolled with the punches and became the, the squeaky clean image that Hollywood wanted. So, um... But they did their time in the pre-code, too. So it's very interesting to see how so much was forgiven. It's it's really interesting. Um, Greta Gobo was on my Swedish money. <laughs> Something, and now we get to all the embarrassing ads, like bunions. That's a bad bunion. Um, a free $1 diamond ring, whatever. Hot. Hollywood in large of your favorite photo, asthma, agony, cured in days, feminine hygiene, tense hair, 
Here's new, excitingly different drinking companions for readers of Screen Guide. Once again, it's the war. Look, it's a sailor kissing a girl. That's even before that famous photograph was even taken. It, how interesting. Um, it, 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 it's, uh, there's a Marine kissing a girl. There's a, a, <laughs> That's a factory worker making planes. That's a factory worker uniform. An army soldier. Uh, someone wearing khakis and uh, someone wearing an army uniform. See, all of this is war effort drinking glasses. And it would be so cool. Look, keep him rolling. He's working in the factory. We're on it. We'll, uh, this is a Marine one. Protect the shores. That's Navy, okay? Or Coast Guard. Um, it's another Navy one. And that's Army Salute. So... It would be really cool to have this set. I'm not actually curious to see if they even still any still exist. And the finish. So that was Screen Guide, a tour of a magazine. And I look at a time when the entire country was committed to war. When people's uh, time after the pre-code, when actors who did edgy or racy stuff were uh, reinvented as squeaky clean and family friendly. Just an interesting time to be alive. An interesting magazine to look at and I hope you enjoyed uh, this tour so uh, please rate comment and subscribe bye